What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome to another review. It's Chelsea free Southampton free and I don't really know how the hell we've managed to drop two points out of that but Looking back at it, it just seems typical. It's like a lot of Chelsea games that we've seen over the last two seasons and I hate to say it, we do really need to start having a talk about this defensive organisation because it really is shambolic. It looked like another throwback to last season. I'm not going to sit here and say Lampard out or anything, but I'm also going to say Lampard is not innocent and Lampard cannot be um, ignored and not be questioned at certain points. I think this defensive organisation has been a huge problem. We were meant to bring in Anthony Barry to improve it. Right now, I haven't seen any improvement. The most I will give Frank Lampard is that, yeah, Mendy didn't play. And you know exactly how annoying it is having Kepper in goal for 90 minutes if you lot literally saw today. And also, we didn't have Thiago Silva, so he lacked a little bit of leadership in the back line. But Azpilicueta was there too. And it's not like he's a bad leader. You can have that argument a couple seasons ago under Maurizio Sarri, but you can't have that argument now. Every game is becoming in the, is becoming the same key factor that there are individual mistakes that we keep making. And it becomes to a point where it's not just the players. It has to be the manager that takes some of the blame as well. Kurt Zuma for that second goal. What the hell was that, man? And this is a guy that I've been... People say I've been protecting. I'm not protecting when it comes to this. He made a stupid mistake for that second goal. Kepa as well. But I've said so many times about Kepa and how useless he is. I'm not even going to go too much into it again. Kurt Zuma, if he just took that ball outside, none of these issues happen. But his first touch, he tries to bring the ball inside and he scuffs the shot. And then from then on, it's just all comical from there. Kepa, the hologram, goes through the ball yet again. Somehow they still don't score from that. He tries to come back but licks himself off the post and Che Adam smashes it in. We haven't even delved too much into the actual game. I've just sat here talking about how poor the game management's been from us yet again. And here's the thing. Last season, I fully accept that we're growing, we're transitioning. And even to, ex to an extent now, we're growing and we're transitioning. But... We've spent 200 million plus now, so the same excuse doesn't count anymore. Last season, we had a transfer ban. We had no Eden Hazard. Kante was out injured most of the season. It makes sense that we're going to have a little bit of those dull periods that we need to just try and manage. This season, we look a lot better going forward. Going forward, I've got no issues with half of the players that was on the pitch, except maybe Mason Mount. He looked a little bit out of it yet again. But other than that, going forward, we were excellent. Defensive work just lets us down yet again. Looking at the lineup, initially no problems with it, except maybe we could have just brought Petr Cech out of retirement in hindsight. We might have still have a better chance of winning. But other than that, I didn't really complain too much about the lineup. Yeah, people are gonna say Mason Mount was starting. I think at the very worst we could have just brought him out. We could have brought him off a bit earlier. But other than that. Okay, I can't even sugarcoat it too much. He had a bad performance as well as Pulisic. But I give more credit to Southampton based on that, which is something I haven't done in this video as well. Southampton were a very good team throughout the 90 minutes. That whole second half, they were completely over us. And to be fair, they deserve to leave the point. But same way, we're not playing the game of who deserves what. We're playing the game of what was happening in the match. We were 2-1. We were 3-2 up with three minutes left. We were 2-0 up and we bottled the 2-0 lead as well because of individual mistakes. And that's what's so jarring about all of this. And there was so much good work in that first half. Timo Werner finally broke his Premier League duck and the first two goals were excellent. And I want to put some respect on his name as well because I haven't said too much about him so far. And there's been so many rival fans trying to pull nibbles at it saying Timo Werner's been poor over the last few games. Calvert-Lewin's better than Werner. Lacazette's better than Werner. No, Timo Werner showed you exactly what you can do when you play him up front. The reason why Timo Werner has been poor for us over the last few games is because he's been playing left wing, taking the bleep test because Pulisic and Ziyech have been out injured. That's not his natural position. He can play at the left hand side, but he roams in there from centre forward. There's no, it doesn't make sense him coming in straight off the left hand side. If anything, I've been saying he should be playing more on the right hand side because you keep him more on his stronger right foot instead of having to play a predictable cut inside which every defender can read. But his first goal, excellent. 
Brilliant nutmeg and turn on ben on Bednarek. Had the composure to keep the ball with two or three players in front of him as well until he found a hole to dink it in. That was an amazing first finish from him. The link up with Jorginho as well for the second goal was shades of that Tammy Abraham goal against Watford last season. But Jorginho has been trying that ball so many times but it's come out to players like Morata, off form Tammy Abraham and Mishi Batshuayi and it just hasn't really come off as well. That came off excellently and it was a brilliant connection with Timo Werner for the second goal. And also the composure to dink it over the goalkeeper's head and head it into the net it was just so satisfying to watch but that's where most of the satisfaction ended because as soon as it went into half time and it turned into the second half Southampton were on our ass from minute one and what happened we couldn't cope and we bottled it. The first goal from Southampton actually in the first half my bad Kai Havertz gets caught in possession unluckily could Christensen have closed down the gap a bit quicker? I think that's more just of a case of pace. I don't want to blame him too much for it, but I do think that that space was a bit too open. And Danny Ings just took it round Kepa for 2-1 just before half-time. <coughs> not going not gonna to blame the goalkeeper too much on that one. Danny Ings just took that one well, if we're being real about it. Second half, though, like we said, Southampton were all over our arse. They, they were beating us to press so many times, especially on the wings, and that's why I think Pulisic and Mount really struggled to have any impact on the game. Anytime the ball was being played out to that far hand side, there was two or three players on them, and they just had no options to release the ball onto, which meant they just kept losing it. Second goal turns around, like we said, it was just comical defending from Kurt Zuma and Kepa. Kurt Zuma has the look. Kurt Zuma has an easy pass to make, can easily just take the ball round the other way, away from the goalkeeper, away from danger, but he tries a little back pass to Kepa with a poor connection on it, and Kepa, the hologram ball goes right through him, and Che Adams just scores on the little scramble for goal afters, I can't even describe it too much, so much is happening, but that's been a problem with the way we defend, we defend so much and we look like we're all just clowns, every single damn time it's just players in the wrong positions, players chasing balls or chasing shadows, and we never really look like we're in control, the only game I can say that we look like we've been in control defensively was the Liverpool game before the Christensen red card, and the Crystal Palace match where Roy Hodgson basically forgot how to attack which doesn't even make sense for anything. It don't count for anything. The good thing for us, as soon as we turned it to 2-2, the reaction was excellent. Christian Pulisic, with his only real involvement in the game, sets up for Timo Werner to set up Kai Havertz for his first Premier League goal for Chelsea. And things look a little bit more composed at that point. It's an excellent response from Chelsea. And we look like we're on our way coming back. Second half continues to progress. Crystal um, Southampton are still trying to make chances, but... We look for the most point like we're holding on to it. It's just in the middle of the play, we're struggling with the midfield battle and we're just getting dominated a little bit, but they weren't making us pay for it. Theo Walcott was doing pretty well in the attacking midfield position. I will give him credit for that. And we, all we need to do is just hold on as the game got closer to 90 minutes. But Jan Vestergaard pops up with a header and the annoying thing, he didn't even jump for it. It was just a, it was a diving header that yet again Kepa couldn't reach. And it's another one that I'm looking at with like a taller goalkeeper with a bigger wig, wingspan can get on the end of that. And who am I thinking of? Edouard Mendy as usual. The international break fucks us over a yet again. Have another jammy injury and we've dropped two points because our defending has been calamitous today. Let's roll through the player ratings before I wrap this video up because I need to spark one. Um, we'll start off in goal. Kepa, two. I mean, he didn't play as badly as he did against Liverpool, even though I think that's very debatable. I'll be real. This Kepa experiment is dead. If I see him in a Chelsea shirt again, it'll be too soon. Every game is just a mistake. He looks devoid of confidence. There's one BS error that happens. So, Kepa gets a two. As P... Um, on the, I don't think he was too bad today. Uh, let me know in the comments section if I'm chatting worse or not. But I don't think he was too bad today. Five, I guess. I don't think I'm, I'm not giving any of the defenders a good rating. Christensen, four. I think, yeah, struggled a lot. Struggled in some phases, decent in others, but again, not too much impact. Kurt Zuma just for the defensive error alone. It's annoying because he had he was, he was doing a lot aerially as well. Uh, but on the ball just looked a little bit suspect in some areas as well. He can't get a higher rating than Andreas Christensen, so I'm going to give him a 4. Ben Chilwell, decent going forward, had a nice early chance. Lacked a bit of pace in certain areas. I would say that. I'm not sure if he's still coming back off that injury or not. Um, 
five, I think. N'Golo Kante, I'm going to give a four. I thought his passing was just shambolic at times. Interceptions was very good. I'll give him on that. But passing range really needs to improve. Jorginho, for the assist, I, I think he had a pretty decent performance. I think him and Kante needs to be a bit more in sync. They both were pressing at the same time. They were leaving spaces exposed. Other than that, I thought, okay, performance. I'll give him a six. Mason Mount, four. Barely got involved in the game. Yeah, got hauled off around the 70, 80 minute mark, but he looked a bit gassed before then. I'm going to give him a four. Kai Havertz. Do I go for a five or a six? I think I'll give him a five and a half. Only because of the mistake leading up to the first goal. But I don't think he had a bad performance today. Christian Pulisic, he'll get a five as well. He didn't really have that much involvement except for the build up to the third goal. Again, same thing with Mason Mount. He just struggled at a pace with the pressing from the wings. Timo Werner, excellent performance, man of the match by a mile. He gets a seven today. We'll feel really let down by the defense and I feel bad for him, but it just is what it is. Ziyech, nice nutmeg, but not really too much involvement in the match, five. Tammy Abraham, I don't really know if he gets a rating, barely any involvement. Reese James, same thing, barely any involvement. I'm not giving them ratings. But yeah, this is the end of the Chelsea Southampton player ratings. We have absolutely bottled that one. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, do whatever.